So, you've crashed your drone. Hello world, my name is Matt Spa, and I'm a photographer, videographer, and daredevil drone pilot in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm not really a daredevil, but to get the shot I want, I'm not shy about flying my drone into situations where a certain amount of risk is involved. I'm set up in the shop today because I'm working on a couple of DIY videos, but I wanted to take time from that to share a recent experience in hope that it will be of benefit to my fellow drone pilots out there. As a pilot, I've had my share of bumps and minor hits along the way. I've inadvertently pruned a few Nandina bushes here and there, and I even lost a propeller on a Japanese maple once. But until a couple of weeks ago, I'd never sustained any significant damage. Which brings me to the purpose of this video, what do you do when you've crashed your drone? If you're new here, my channel is about all things audio, video, and photo related. If you're into that, or down with it, or want to be up on it, please consider subscribing. So two weeks ago, I was working on a virtual garden tour. And this project has been a challenge, partly because I'm subject to the whims of the weather, and partly because of the timing of different plants when they burst forth in all their glory. Wisteria pops pretty early in late March, and Lady Banks Rose, on the other hand, doesn't really get going until things warm up a bit. Consequently, it's a waiting game, and when the light is right and hits that bloom or bud in just the right way, I have to be ready with either tripod, gimbal, or drone. That anticipation leads to an urgency and a single-mindedness when the magic moment finally presents itself, and consequently, in the case of drone work, it can be tempting to push battery life to its absolute limit. For work like this, I fly a DJI Mavic Pro 2. It's got a great camera on it, and it's small enough and nimble enough to give me the shots I want. I can usually get about 18 to 20 minutes of flight time out of a fully charged battery, but the Pro 2 starts beeping at you when it gets down to around four or five minutes of remaining battery life. This can be really annoying. It's a distraction, so you try to block it out and concentrate on the job at hand. But the Pro 2 will not be ignored and will reach a point when it decides it must fly home. That's what happened to me a couple of weeks ago. And even though the drone was, and I'm not exaggerating, 10 feet away from me, it decided it had had enough and was gonna return home. For some reason, when it reaches this conclusion, it flies straight up, which in my case meant flying directly into a crepe myrtle, into which it quickly wrapped itself up and could no longer fly. So for the record, I didn't crash my drone. It crashed itself, and it did so so quickly that I didn't have time to cancel the fly home command, which you can do, but it literally gave me like two seconds of warning. Enough vindication seeking over the incident, I suppose, but what do you do now? Your drone's stuck in a tree. My first inclination was to get it down, so I taped a uh, BMW motorcycle head bearing adjustment tool onto a mop handle. I climbed the tallest A-frame ladder I could find, and I tried to gently hook the drone. This resulted in me getting frustrated and ultimately taking a bit of a swing at it, and that swing made contact with a limb and knocked my drone loose, and it came down to the ground. Now, if I'm painfully honest, I would have to speculate that the fall to the ground actually did more damage than the initial contact with the tree, and was probably the reason why I had to seek professional repair help, but I digress. Step number one, then, is to, when your drone is up a tree, carefully consider how you might get it down. It's really easy to get all worked up and find yourself pursuing a course of action that will likely do more harm than good. Trust me, there is no hurry. Just chill out and think about reasonable ways to free your aircraft and or catch it before it makes a hard landing. But what if it's not stuck, or as in my case, has hit the ground and sustained damage that requires professional repair? What then? As I mentioned at the beginning of pretty much every video I make, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta is the 37th largest city in the U.S., and the metropolitan area is home to about 5.6 million people. Drones are pretty popular, and lots of people crash them, and so you'd think that in a city the size of mine, there would be no shortage of qualified repair resources. But all I could find were hobby shops that didn't want to deal with me, strip mall phone screen replacement stores that got abysmal reviews, and individuals with websites offering repair service that never called me back or never bothered to respond to any of my email inquiries. So I sent my drone to Texas. And if you fly a DJI product, I recommend you do so as well. 
I'm making this video to share my experience with DJI support in the repair of my drone, and of course, to continue to try to vindicate myself that the crash was not my fault. For the record, DJI isn't sponsoring this video and all the opinions I express are my own. Setting up a repair with DJI was super simple. You go to the website, which I'll link below, and fill out a ticket. They send you a UPS, shipping label, prepaid, so you don't have to deal with the knuckleheads at your local UPS franchise. Once DJI receives your drone, you start getting status reports that are dated and timed. I got a notification when they had received my aircraft. I got a damage assessment email with photos. I got a fully itemized cost estimate with a one-click payment option. I got notification of the payment received, notification of completion of repair, and a shipping notice with tracking info when they were done. When I received my repaired drone, they had cleaned it thoroughly and included a fresh set Set of propellers in the package. The process was quick and easy, and I'll say it, it was elegant. It put minimal requirements on me, and I got my aircraft back really quickly. People joke that uh, whoever designed the Chick-fil-A drive through should take over the DMV. Well, I think every company in the world could possibly learn a thing or two from DJI in terms of user experience when working with their support team. The only downside was that return shipping was via UPS, who actually had my drone in their possession twice as long as DJI did. Lastly, and this is the thing that pushed me to take the time to script, shoot, and edit this video. When my repair was complete, they sent me an email allowing me a 72-hour window to opt into their care refresh program. This is something that you're offered when you purchase a new drone, and in hindsight, I obviously should have opted in. The program covers water damage. It allows for up to two replacement aircrafts in a year. It will expedite your repair, and you get free shipping. Now, DJI extended that offer on an aircraft that was purchased well over a year ago to a person who is known to crash drones, or at least is an owner of drones that crash themselves. That's just, that's just how you do business. And it makes me so happy that I'm glad to invest my time and effort to tell as many people as will listen. It's the seemingly lost art of actually respecting your customer base and genuinely valuing customer loyalty. If you've had an experience with a great repair company or have a tale of woe about one you think people should be warned about, please share it below. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. And until the next one, thank you for watching.